getting all the clean and wonderful. So you get a team by and invite you to go by and look at the cafeteria and all and look at the classrooms and stuff. I think we they've made a tremendous improvement at all. On the, on the facility there. Uh, the, uh, the next phase is phase two. There's going to be the science lab and everything on that wing down there. Uh, I think there's going to be a total of 15 to 16 classrooms. And the uh, supervisors say feel like we'll be able to move a little bit faster on phase one than we did on phase two simply because of the fact that they learned a lot on phase one. So if we don't have any problems getting uh, receiving materials, we shouldn't have a whole lot of uh, issues that we'll, that we'll have to deal with. Uh, they did put in a brand new grease trap and all those kinds of things, so we should, shouldn't have any complaints from the cafeteria no time soon. Okay. <clears throat> with uh, with the uh, new building project, and I really wish maybe Friday we could go over and take a look, because for the most part, they work about nine and a half hours a day, and on Friday 12th, with the exception of the uh, the bricklayers, everybody else is gone. So that would be a good time. And right now, we can, you know, if it's not wet, we can kind of drive around to see what we need to see there. But uh, you can see that thought putting them with the metal studs in. They have the uh, 11th grade. Okay. <clears throat> they have the 11th grade and the uh, the 9th grade wing. The outer structure is already uh, pulled together. And part of my... Uh, Superintendent's report, Mr. Fields, the assistant, he'll show you about the progress they've made. They should start putting the top on the gym in the installation uh, this week, hopefully. So they're, they're moving right along. They were waiting for some of the dough frame to come in uh, last week. And uh, but the brick masons the brick are moving right along. They have both, both basically both sides of the gym already picked up at this particular time. Just the time point. Are there any questions? Well, uh, in regards <coughs> to you uh, making a suggestion about going next Friday, yes, ma'am. Uh, or uh, uh, this Friday, is it this Friday? This Friday. Okay. Well, what time would you look at it? If you look at maybe about 1.30 or something like that, because usually uh, everybody they clear out around about 12 or 1 when they leave for lunch, they they gone for the day. Okay. Just okay. yes, for information purposes, not that they're trying to change the thing. The high Friday is 39. Say, Barney? The high Friday is 39. Degree? Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <coughs> so, how we get another Friday? <laughs> well, that was going to be my question, because I really would like to see what has been done. Yeah. And, uh, you know, before it, they start having the traffic and all in and out. Yeah. So, uh, I had <coughs> made a note of that. Um, and if we like, we could do just like stay out here with the ride through. Because the way it got it, the road is designed, we can ride through now. If you got a nice shiny piece, it might not be the same piece that does, it's pretty bad out there. But Mr. Field has some pictures that he's going to show shortly. And the other thing I wanted to ask, uh, and I had mentioned to Mr. James that I was going to put it out in the meeting and ask you and then Mr. Fields to make a suggestion. When we have reports like this, would it be possible to put it on our calendar so we will know when these kinds of things are discussed with the board? I think that will go a long way with helping us to keep up with things as they are occurring. Uh, because I think this is important that, you know, we're discussing the, the building update. <coughs> we can tell exactly when this was done. We can always go back and look at the calendar for these kinds of things. But there are several that, as I was going through this, I looked at it and I thought about it and I said, well, maybe if we start putting these kinds of things on the calendar, it may help us to do a better job when it comes to doing our evaluations, et cetera. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Well, let me ask you this. Yes, I'm going to put about that information for reference. It's going to be 39 degrees high. He suggested that we could possibly uh, ride, drive through. So when you want to drive through or come over another day, it's going to be cold the next week or so, a couple yeah. of weeks, maybe. I don't know. But we can always look at the following Friday, and then look at the following Friday, because then we get that one further along right here. Well, I'm just saying, you know, if, if members want to go, realize that it might be 35 degrees or 39, if we ride through, that's fine. That's what I'm just asking. The board, what, what, what do y'all think? Well, I mean, y'all going on. I ain't 
There's not. I ain't got to see it right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so you want to wait? I mean, yeah, for me, that's yeah. way to take it. Y'all want to ride through something? Because I'm riding through something on the morning. Wait for the next ride. Wait for the next ride. That's what you're doing. That is on you. Yeah. You want to wait and do it? That's not whatever the majority is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it changes between now and then because sometimes in the afternoon, they used to get out there in the afternoon around about 4 o'clock, 4 or something like that. And they have a skeleton. Okay. All right. Thank you. And just to make sure we start putting Police Department. 
Okay. Now we have 8.2. Good evening, Mr. James and members of the board. I'm presenting action item 8.2 as it regards to the project search program. Um, as we know, this is a business-led nine-month employment program that allows students with disabilities to gain work experience. Um, it's a recommendation of the superintendent that we approve the MOU uh, between uh, Magis Adams, Mayor Health, and the Mississippi Department of Rehabilitation. Okay. I second. Okay, it's been moved by Dr. Robinson, the second by Mr. Good. We have our roll call. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Mr. Witt? Aye. Dr. Buck? Aye. Mr. Stilson? Aye. Mr. James? 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 Aye. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was two people. Okay. Eight point three. Mr. James, members of the board, eight point three is the approval of the National Adams School District safe return to in person learning plan as a provision of the district receiving extra funds uh, in the spring of the year prior to the start of the 21 22 school year. The board approved its safe return to in-person learning and continuity of services plan. As a provision of uh, that uh, particular mandate, the board of trustees is required to update that uh, plan every six months. And so uh, you have the safe return to in-person learning plan uh, in your board packet. There were no changes made to uh, that plan. So everything stands as you approved uh, last year. So it is the recommendation of the superintendent that you approve um, the plan to continue in force through uh, the next six months. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Red. <coughs> Second by Mr. Newton. Roll call. Dr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Dr. Bunch. Aye. Mr. Newton. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. That's five zero. Okay, we have 8.4. 8.4 is the administration. Good evening, Mr. James, members of the board, Superintendent Mr. Butcher, Deputy Superintendent Ms. McDonald Green. Um, coming to you today to present the COPS grant that we were uh, funded right prior to uh, the Christmas break. Give you a little background on it. The COPS Office of School Violence Prevention Program is a competitive award program designed to provide funding to improve security at schools and on the school grounds in the, in the grantees' jurisdiction through evidence based school safety systems. The funding is used to improve security at schools and on school grounds and grantees' jurisdictions through evidence based school safety programs that may include one or more of the following coordination with law enforcement training for local law enforcement officers to prevent school violence against others and self, placement and use of metal detectors, locks, lighting, and other deterrent measures, acquisition and installation of technology for expedited notification of law enforcement during an emergency, and also any other measure that in the termination of the director of the cops office may provide a significant improvement in security. So we had a few highlights to go through that. Applications were evaluated on several factors, including the program impact of the proposed project, uh, financial need, need for improved security, current school safety and planning efforts, funding, request and integration information, management and implementation plan, and sustainability plan. Um, we had, there were 285 applications were received. There were only 153 awarded totaling them fifty one million dollars. Um, in the state of Mississippi, I think we had what six? six. There were six and we were one of six. Um, I think the most that was awarded was five hundred thousand. It was the um the maximum that any school district 
throughout the uh, U.S. was awarded was uh, 500000 We're very fortunate that... That we received $439,787. Right. So we do uh, have a 25% match. And that's it. So that, that's all. Um, I know a lot of our money we look at equipment, but you know we are allowed to make some adjustments within it as um, long as it's approved. So, so that's what do you mean? mean? And this was you said equipment. Equipment, well, uh, basically access for control. right access oh. control ways of uh, locking down campus at, okay. at push of a button. Okay. Fencing and things like that. Um, also, I think we put in for uh, intercom systems that you know may be old and outdated and stuff like that. This was our second uh, writing uh, for this particular application uh, prior to COVID starting. Actually, about February, March of COVID's year, uh, we actually started working closely with our grant writer for this application, and uh, and and we're not afforded. The money at at that particular time, but COPS um, provides you <clears throat> a printout, actually an overview of your applications, uh, showing your strengths and your areas of improvement. We actually had several areas of strength, and and those few areas of of deficits, uh, we actually made some amendments to that application, and we were lucky this time through our our grant writing team to be afforded. Uh, that amount of four hundred thirty-nine thousand. Am I right? Yes, four hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars. Is this the one we were just late getting it in or something? Is that is this the one? No, that one uh, was one that, that we weren't allowed to turn in, and it wasn't our fault. Right. We actually had everything completed on time and had it sent out. Um, there was a, a hang up at I think UPS right. that our yes. our packet fell off the, the turntable or whatever it was. <laughs> They got tore up and they, they didn't allow us to uh, resubmit. Yeah. So that wasn't our fault. Is there a particular time limit in reference to having utilized these funds that you may be required to use about three years? It's actually three years. Okay. And then, fortunately, you have an opportunity to write again. Right. So uh, if our superintendents approve, we'll keep writing. And, if you look and the board, the, I'm sorry. At the very first page, it shows you the list of equipment and all that uh, they did apply for. Right. And I was very pleased with the fact that we were able to uh, get the type of money we did uh, from this one. There's a, a lot of lead work, and, you know, <laughs> teamwork put into it, but. I was excited. It was the first grant that we were actually um, awarded since I've been here, so you know, I, was, I was excited about that. And I want to say, uh, Mr. Davis, members of the board, that I want to commend uh, Mr. Davis and Ms. Uh, Carla along with Ms. Uh, Ms. Campbell because yes. of the fact that uh, right and grant is it's no, it's no picnic. But they uh, really uh, stayed the course even after we didn't get the award for the first time. And this grant will help us to make sure that two hours we there is other than staff, because we can't find staff sometimes, was our air conditioner and our camera system and communication system. So between the ESSA funds and this grant, we should be able to improve and make improvement on two of our uh, most difficult areas. Yeah. Carla, there's no further discussion. Carla, I'll ask the motion that we would uh, approve this. And accept the grant proposal. Okay. Okay. Mr. Smith made the motion to accept the grant proposal to accept by Dr. Robinson. Uh, roll call. Dr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Webb. Aye. Dr. Lunch. Aye. Mr. Newton. Aye. Mr. James. Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. We got an 8.5. Eight 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 uh, 8.5, as you know, when you write a grant, you have to have somebody over to that grant. So, uh, you have either passed with the proposal from Ms. Campbell, which I think is a very reasonable proposal. She will oversee the grant for, for, that, for that amount of money. That money will be coming out of the grant. Uh, what's the amount? I thought I saw $2,500 and $50 an hour, something like that. Right, that's mm -hmm. right. So you, don't have, so you don't have a total estimation of it. 
since it's under an hourly basis. 2750. Huh? I think the total payment is 2750 dollars. Mm -hmm. That's that's total. Yeah. That's what I was going to do for two so. Yeah. I thought that was a very reasonable amount. Mm -hmm. So I think she was just estimating how many thousands she was probably having. Yeah. So we need to take that to the board also, right? Huh? Yeah, you need to prove that. Chair, yeah. there's no other discussion <coughs> out of the approval of action item 8.5. Second. Okay. Thousand dollars match to a, an additional hundred thousand. Yes, sir. Hundred thousand dollars total. What we demand is hundred thousand. 
So it's a hundred and fifty. That's what I asked. Okay, right. So it's a hundred thousand dollars and fifty thousand dollars. Right. Kind of like investing your money, fifty percent return on it. You understand? I didn't know whether it was so it'll be a hundred to fifty or whether it was fifty or hundred. So they got more to work with. Page four and five highlights the 
Uh, American Beverage Association approved beverages that will be offered to uh, the students through the vending plan. Uh, Coca-Cola follows all USDA and ABA beverage guidelines to make sure our schools are compliant in uh, all state regulations. Um, pages six and seven, they highlight the full service vending plan, uh, the service, the equipment, including credit card readers and, and timers uh, where needed. So um, machines that are at the schools and students will have access to, they'll have timers on, on them. We would uh, coordinate that with the uh, food service office to make sure that when students cannot um, act or don't need to access the machines, the timers uh, won't allow access. <clears throat> Page 8 <clears throat> uh, talks about athletic concessions. Um, with Coke, uh, they would enhance the student and fan experience at all athletic events. Uh, they're going to offer free print work for all menu boards. The banners and window screens. Uh, that will brighten up the concession areas and give it a more professional look. And also give us a chance to highlight the partnership between the school uh, and COPE. Pages 9 and 10, are, uh, that's a detailed outline of the funding and service that uh, Nash's Coca-Cola will provide to us. Page 11 um, outlines the obligations of the National Atlanta School District and the partnership plan. If you look on page 12, it's going to show the marketing and contribution. We got all the page. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're here. Oh, I'm looking at it on here. Oh, no. No, I put that on your, <laughs> on your desk. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, marketing contribution overview, uh, just a complete roll up of the partnership plan and highlights the really the total value of the plan. So these are the things they're giving us, right? Yes, sir. So we're gonna get all these cool looking cups and squeeze about. All of that that's gonna be um, mainly for our athletics. That means shouldn't be nobody else walking around, you know, squeezy cup. Correct. <laughs> if I do, I see them, I'm on one. Yes, sir. Yeah. I got you. Um, pages 13 and 14, um, that's just the commitment page and uh, the legal document that we'll talk about um, in just a little bit. 15. Uh, those are our contact um, people, and they have been very, very, very good to work with. We really started on this uh, pre-COVID, uh, and of course, COVID came. We lost traction, but we picked it up, and they were very uh, eager to come back in. And on page, uh, the last page, it talks about um, how they will help us with with signage. Um, in the first year, we're asking them to give us assistance with uh, the school marquee for the new school. Um, they will commit uh, that first amount that you see, and they will actively uh, help us go out to other business partners in the, in the community to come up with whatever funds we need for uh, the type of school marquee that we choose. Um, and in the Subsequent years, you know, we, we can look at, uh, you know, football scoreboard, basketball score table, softball field, you know, whatever we think the need is at that, at that time. Um, as far as vending, we will get a 25% commission on all dollars collected. Um, our athletic programs, our uh, concession stands, they, they will buy Coke products directly from Coke. So that takes away folk going to Walmart and having to load up their cars or find a good sale at Sam's. 
uh, and all of that. Uh, Coke, they would place the order, Coke would bring the product uh, to the concession stand for them. The great thing about it, whatever the boosters purchase uh, for sale, whatever they don't sell, they're not stuck with it. They can give it back to Coke and Coke will reimburse them. And also there is a $4 rebate on every uh, case that's, that's purchased. So a uh, very good deal there. Um, I have been in contact with Attorney Kinley about this um, agreement. He does have two concerns, um, and that's in your, what was in your board packet, 4E and 4F. Bruce, are you on? Yes, sir. I'm like, yes, sir. I was uh, just letting the board know about your concerns uh, with 4E and 4F. And if we can uh, get with Coke and get those things uh, rectified or get them uh, to your liking, we would like, we recommend that we enter into this partnership with Coke. Coke. Before we do that, I was going to ask if Bruce has reviewed this, and evidently he has, and he has a couple of concerns. But I do want to ask this uh, before Bruce kind of gives his explanation. What's the time frame for this contract? It's a five-year contract. Five years. Yes, sir. Okay. With no option, uh, whatever. Uh, so it's just a five-year, and after five years, terminate. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me ask this question, perhaps, Ms. Lucian, if someone else has been in on or not, would know the answer to this. Uh, this appears to be a reasonably good arrangement. Why is it we haven't had such an arrangement before? Anybody know? I, well, I would say as far as, as, as Coke, Coke has gone through, uh, they're under new management, they're under Coca-Cola United. Okay. Now, uh, so you know they are operating, and you know definitely in Hattiesburg and in other uh, school districts. And uh, you know we reached out to them to see if we could get a deal like they're doing it. So you know, prior to them, we didn't have anybody. Prior to them, we were we we, we, we I mean, we that we uh, went to Walmart and Sam's and. You know, found something on sale to try to buy it enough, but the disadvantage of that, you know, I know at the end of the season, sometimes we have a lot of drinks and stuff left. You know, you need a good so we, we did that. It was good because you made a good profit. You know, they have the power on sale for the city. You buy a couple of pallets of them, and if you don't have a rainy game, you do all right. But then with a rainy game or whatever the case is, you end up being stuck with a lot of them. The other thing is, I think we really started on this about, what, three years ago? About three years ago, we played in a tournament down in Hattiesburg. And Mr. Sears bought the, uh, the owner, of uh, the CEO of Coca-Cola, to me in the stands, and we told him that we would work with him. But if you remember, we had signed an agreement with uh, with a local company here, and uh, as a result, we could we had it was like a two-year agreement. So that agreement is null and void now. So well, that's why I was asking. I was thinking we already had something in the past. Right. Uh, if that, that agreement is, is null and void. It's been null and void. Right. Okay. And we'll be working with our local people here at Coca-Cola United if we get approved. The one thing I like about you, let's say with the marquee, if the marquee calls us 50,000 pounds, they will put up whatever they're going to put up, and then they will come in to find partners to help with the rest of it. The two things that Bruce has, uh, <coughs> well, I never oh, shared it so he can uh, explain that to us. Here you go. Uh, okay, just just let me uh, jump in on Mr. West's comment about the termination or the end of the agreement. Um, th there is an obligation that if the district negotiates a new deal with some other provider or modeler, uh, that we would give them, them, being Coca-Cola United, an opportunity to meet those terms, uh, at least uh, meet the terms that we have negotiated. So there is kind of a right of first refusal uh, going forward at the end of the five-year term. 
that I think you were asking about, Mr. West. Yes, sir. Thank you. The um, issues that I, I had and talked to Mr. Phil about is uh, in the Exhibit A, the uh, consideration provision 4F, I mean 4E, provides for an indemnity of schooling to indemnify the bother for uh, claims made against the bother uh, arising out of the contract. As, we, as y'all know, we cannot indemnify anybody. Yeah. Um, that's considered uh, a new permissible donation under the Constitution, so we're going to have to address that provision. Uh, 4F is an insurance provision requiring us to obtain a liability policy uh, in the amount of $2 million per occurrence. Uh, and would require us to name Coca-Cola United as an additional insurer. Well, uh, y'all know that we, we can't buy a $2 million policy. No insurance company will, will sell us or provide us a $2 million policy because the Tort Claims Act limits our liability to $500,000. And so, no, no insurance company will provide us insurance in excess of that. So, we're going to have to address that with you. So, let me ask this to follow up of what you just indicated. So, you think the contract would be a reasonable proposal uh, if, in fact, they would adhere to a $500,000 limit, then we would be reasonable for us to pay for that? Well, uh, the, ordinarily, Mr. Willis, the, uh, the naming of an additional insured on the liability policy is not going to cost us any additional premium. Okay. Uh, and so I, I don't think that's an unreasonable request. Uh, so, I think we can do it, and I think if they understand our our inability to get anything over five hundred thousand dollars, we should we should be able to do that. Okay. So we are asking the board to approve this contract Subject with this stipulation, so that those items that the attorney have uh, have addressed, if we give him an opportunity to contact their attorney, see if we get this worked out. I'll up a motion we would accept the contract uh, proposal uh, and arrangement as long as those uh, two stipulations are addressed through our board attorney in conjunction with their attorney. Second. Okay, the motion made by Mr. West, second by Ms. Newsom. We have our roll call. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Uh, Mr. West? Aye. Uh, Dr. Butt? Dr. Butt? Uh, Mrs. Newsom? Aye. Mr. Jackson? Aye. Passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're down to item 9, financial statement. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bird. Bird. Yes, sir. I'm here. I was just getting my, trying to get my button dry over here. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board and Governor Superintendent and Superintendent. I put it in your packets and item 9.1 are the financial reports and capital project summaries for review. I want to make sure I have a chance to uh, pause and do a chance to ask questions before we are here. I 
I didn't quite hear you about the uh, what kind of report? You know, there are five reports we suppose the board is supposed to make sure it gets from the financial oh, okay. person. Okay. And I was just saying to list them so the board will know he's providing okay. them. Okay. But if you have them listed, <coughs> you'll know that all five of them are part of the I mean, safeguard. Yeah. Right. Okay, Mr. Right. Mr. James, members of the board, uh, before you are the uh, policies for 30 day review for the month of January. Uh, please pay uh, attention. There is only one policy that has a requested revision, and that is policy FCA, dealing with the facility study. And in that particular policy, the board has to uh, designate a dollar amount that uh, you will say a project manager needs to be uh, hired in order to continue with that particular project. So the only uh, what we need from the board is for the board to determine what that dollar amount is going to be. Uh, there's policy FCA facility study, and then we're also going to review sections E and section F with no request to revisions to those sections. Okay. So, let me handle that. Within okay. okay, the next 30 days, you want to come out of town. You like me? Oh, God, you come. Oh, okay. <coughs> Okay, technology monthly update. Good afternoon. Before you have the monthly technology report, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 9.4. Ms. Thomas. Good afternoon. Before you do you have the December federal programs SO1 and 2 report. Are there any questions? No questions. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Thank you. Next is our board calendar. If I have anything to add, we will talk about it. Okay. 9.6. Okay, should we get it at the field? Part of my company. have a few slides um, with the progress of the uh, new high school. And it's really starting to look good over, over there. Next slide. It's another view of the new high school. With no beams. A lot of beams. Material um, over there now. Next slide. They look like the guys are having a conference over there, but they're doing a good job. <laughs> they should be talking to give them tomorrow. Um, and we went over to uh, the renovation project. They do have a lot of stuff still uh, barricaded over there. But they are um, installing new Ethernet cables, um, classroom ceiling. Uh, I was very happy to see new HVAC systems being installed in. Each each classroom. <clears throat> if you look on the right side there, or you know, your left side, that's basically the, the entire building is going to look once we finish that building because in those two colors are the same basic colors that will be utilized outside of the campus, outside of the new building. So basically, too, you have some uh, some continuity colors. So the Robert, so the uh, middle school won't look like it was just. Set the out of space because we try to coordinate the color there. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Which you may recall this, we may not be aware of this, not aware of it. You may not know the answer to this. Mr. Gonzalez is not here. Do you recall about how much the cost uh, was for the uh, air conditioning of the of the of the middle school of the old house school? I don't do you, know. Do you have Ms. Yes, sir. What did we set aside for, set aside for the air conditioning cost of the middle school? Do you remember? Okay. I don't have it broken out by school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody said we're talking about the original. We, we can, no, no what we're we doing, whatever we, we, we can, can, we're doing. We can find it for you. Right. Well, we can get it another time. I just wondering if you. 
and you can call her what, what that approximate amount was. I'll pay you that. Huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, next slide is the cafeteria. You see the work that's been done on the uh, windows, it looks really good in there, and uh, and on the floor in the uh, cafeteria. Now this is the current cafeteria. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, we also got a chance to go um, back in the kitchen area, and we saw the new floors, uh, ceiling tiles, and. Uh, lighting in the cafeteria. <clears throat> now those floors are the uh, whatever they have slip, trip and fall on the table line it is. Yeah. On the table line it is, it has like a nice smooth. It's a rug over it like bumpy. Yeah, right, bumpy up. That concludes the presentation. That's a good project, man. <laughs> thank you, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Field. Like I say, I thank you, you know, appreciate uh, once we get a chance to do, uh, do our on site and on site visit. Even during the holidays, out, I got my hand. I think that's Saturday after Christmas, Sunday after Christmas. I made sure I did this project at least every part of the day. If you were going out, if they were with <clears throat> Okay. Uh, I did pass to you, I passed out to you uh, four or five sheets there. On the very first sheet, it will give you the uh, the number of absentees of staff, number two has been absent. Thank you. Thank you. This is the staff. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to cover that? On the first sheet. Dr. Rose. Yeah, we're going to do this then so on this the executive search. Okay. okay, but this is going to be covered in that too, I think. Okay. 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 <clears throat> All right. School board. Dr. Robinson, do you have anything? No, I, I, well, I would just like to tell everyone to please stay safe. <coughs> Dr. Bunch, do you have anything? Dr. Bunch? No comment. Okay. Ms. Uh, I just want to congratulate the grant writers and uh, all of those people who assisted with writing the grant. I think you've done a tremendous job and we can see that we're going to reap some great benefits from what has been done. So again, congratulations to you. And also, uh, especially that one that's going to help improve our work. Uh, facilities for the athletic items, I am just really, uh, what they call, peacock proud of the fact that we're, we're moving so far in the right direction. So again, congratulations to all of you. And Mr. Davis, uh, we know that we're going to be well protected now that you've got your SWAT license. So uh, we're expecting great things to uh, come up with that. Uh, I guess not. I'll, I'll, I'll say. Okay. And I don't have anything. So now we can get a motion to go into closed nomination to decide who we do have to do. To decide what we have to do for it. Motion for that. Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, close the we're going to close the termination to decide if there are items to be discussed in the second session. I'll second. Okay. It's the motion that made by the Houston. We're going to close the termination to determine if we have our items for objective set. And second by Mr. Webb, our roll call. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Uh, Mr. Webb? Aye. Uh, Dr. Bunch? Dr. Bunch? I don't see that. Okay. Mr. Thank James? I have to pass before the new road. 